Before getting started in any new endeavor, it's always a great idea to get a lay of the land. It's no different in the editing software world because getting a lay of the land means learning the interface. Here's a basic overview of Final Cut Pro 10. When you open Final Cut Pro, you'll usually see the standard window configuration, typically with a new untitled library already created in the upper left-hand window, which is called the sidebar. Next to that is the browser, where media is displayed. To the right of that is the viewer window, where media is played back. And to the right of that is the inspector window that shows a summary of Eclipse information. Below all of these is the timeline, where you actually edit your video. And to the right of the timeline are the audio meters. The browser window is where your imported media is displayed, and it works hand in hand with the sidebar to the left. The sidebar shows any or all libraries, events, folders, and collections that hold your media. You can create and organize libraries, events, folders, and collections here, as well as view additional sidebars for photos and audio files, and titles and generators that can be added to your projects. When an event folder or collection is highlighted, its media will show up in the browser. Here you can skim through files, drag across a clip to select a range, and drag items into your timeline. This browser can be in film strip or list view, and you can sort or group items in the browser by various metadata, change the film strip display size, and narrow media down by length. The buttons above the browser are for importing media and showing or hiding either the keyword editor or background task windows. The viewer is the window next to the browser, where media plays back either when skimmed or played in the timeline. The top of the viewer shows basic clip information and lets you change the viewer size and allows you to view scopes, change playback quality, or view color or alpha channels, overlays, and more. The bottom of the viewer window has controls for transforming the media, adjusting color correction and enhancing audio tracks, and choosing clip retiming options. You can also make the viewer full screen with the button on the bottom right. The inspector panel is to the right of the viewer and shows you the location of the source media file, the event the clip is located in, and if the clip is available in other representations. Other inspectors will become visible whether the clip is selected in the browser or the timeline, allowing you to adjust different aspects of the items. The buttons above the inspector disable or enable the browser, timeline, and inspector windows. The timeline is where your video is created. You can add, trim, delete, and arrange items to tell your story using storylines. The primary storyline is where your main sequence of clips lives. Photos, videos, graphics with alpha channels, music tracks, and more can all be added to the timeline. The top left of the timeline is the Timeline Index, where you can view and search clips in your project to organize them in the timeline. To the right of that are buttons for adding clips to the timeline with different types of edits. Next to these is the Editing Tools drop-down menu. On the far right of the timeline window, you'll see control buttons for audio and video skimming, soloing selected items, turning on or off snapping, changing the appearance of the clips in the timeline, and browsing the effects and transitions. The windows can all be arranged and resized to fit your preferences, and you can add and remove windows in the toolbar or with keyboard shortcuts, then save them as your own personal workspace. In addition to that, there are built-in workspaces that you can select for different stages of your edit. Now that you're familiar with the interface, you won't have to spend extra time clicking around to see what everything does when you're editing. The next step is importing media and getting it down onto your timeline so that you can tell great stories. For that, make sure to download the Pond5 app for Final Cut Pro 10. The app lets you browse through the entire Pond5 collection of video clips, music, and sound effects, and import free previews into your project. You can then edit them, add effects, and then purchase and download the full resolution files to automatically replace previews when you're done. Do you have anything you want us to cover in Final Cut Pro 10? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video and want to see more tutorials, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for more. You can also read the Pond5 blog for an in-depth companion piece, as well as other filmmaking tips and tricks. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to get millions of video clips and other assets to use in your next project.